on this episode of Carpe Diem, wild BC salmon. Look at that baby. Salmon is enjoyed around the world. I wouldn't want farm salmon. How do you cook it? This is just a little bit of mayonnaise. Why is it good for Zoomer health? Experts Zoanne Morton, Ingrid Verdun, and Dane Chauvel celebrate this delicacy. Carpe Diem. Seizing the day for Canadians as we age. Welcome to Carpe Diem. Wild salmon is said to be one of the healthiest of all seafoods full of necessary nutrients. It's a renewable resource that is rarely available year round. Today, I wanna to take you behind the scenes from the fishing boat to the kitchen. But before we engage our expert panel, we asked you, do you eat salmon? I do eat salmon as much as I could possibly get. Oh, love it. I used to fish for it all the time. Yes, I do, but I, I have to say I don't eat a lot of salmon. You know, wild salmon, as I said, it's natural. Like, you know, it'll give you more benefits to your health. I'm an aspiring vegetarian. Okay, full disclosure, I eat salmon. I, I eat fish. Dane, consumers have spoken. They love salmon. And can you blame them? I, mean, I, think, it's, I think it's the perfect food. It's an, an environmentally friendly food. It's a healthy food, and it tastes great. And I'm always trying to get my clients to eat two servings a week of fish because of the fish oils and the protein that we need as we're getting older. And it's also low in mercury, so salmon is wonderful that way. I'm just thrilled that everyone knows what a salmon <laughs> is. It's what we as stream keepers use as a hook, and we bring in people because they they're love salmon. So we can say you love salmon, here's some of the ways that you can help protect and preserve them. No, it's good. And Dane, you spend your life promoting salmon, catching them, retailing them into the best kitchens in the world. Well, we have access to the best salmon in the world yeah. in, in BC because of uh, our management and our production systems here. This is such an exciting show. When we come back, we're going to discuss what we can do to support this precious keystone species. Bye. Still ahead on Carpe Diem. One of the biggest problems for our local salmon streams is that they are receiving vast amounts of rainwater runoff from streets. Carpe Diem. Seizing the day for Canadians as we age. Welcome back. All salmon species spend most of their time in the ocean, but their lives start and end in freshwater rivers. Salmon release efforts are crucial to the life cycle of salmon, and Leah and some local school children show us how it's done. Have you done this before? No, first time. First time? Yes. <laughs> One of the biggest problems for our local salmon streams is that they are receiving vast amounts of rainwater runoff from streets, uh, parking lots, rooftops, um, that comes into the creeks via pipe. The piped water is pretty dirty, carries a lot of pollutants with it, and also it goes through the system and out to the ocean lickety-split instead of soaking into the ground where it becomes part of the groundwater supply. The result is that you have a polluted creek in the winter with far too much water, and then in the summer, your creek starts to get too dry, too warm, too, too shallow, because we haven't stored the groundwater. That's a storm drain. So rain gardens take the rainwater runoff from these parking lots and streets, soak it into the ground, and replenish the groundwater that keeps the creeks clean and healthy. This is just a, it's a real worthwhile thing to do and I, I'm an outdoors person, I love the environment, and this is just my way of putting back in. When we take the eggs from a female salmon, they are called green eggs. So our hope is, is that when we do these things, the eventuality is going to be, we don't have to release salmon here anymore. Now the creek is now self-sustaining again, and then with on ongoing maintenance from groups like stream keepers, the creek stays in, in a viable state for salmon. Tell us a little bit more about Stream Keepers, so Anne. So the Stream Keepers is exactly what Bob just said. It's to make sure that at some point we can stop doing this. In the meantime, there are hatcheries that go and collect the eggs and they fertilize them and then the kids get to release them into the, into the wilds. What we need to take a little bit more caution about is that water quality that Deborah talked about is how do we get that good clean water for these fish so that in this life cycle that they have in the wilds, under the gravel where you and I can't see them, that they're still safe as can be. And so Dane, how does conservation apply to your end of the industry? 
Well, BC and Canada in general benefits from a world-class management regime that uh, is a model of fisheries worldwide. We uh, fish to a precautionary management scheme that sees us only harvest uh, uh, enough fish to uh, ensure that uh, we have adequate escapement. So when consumers are buying BC wild salmon, they know that they can do so with a clear conscience. Speaking of shopping, let's go meet with Roger as I go and pick a salmon right off the boat. I'm here at Steveston's Fisherman's Wharf and I'm here to buy a fish directly from the boats. I was looking for the sign. Aha, uh -huh, you found it. I found it. Hey, I'm Carmen. Hi, Carmen. Roger. Nice hey, to Roger. Come Permission to come aboard, here. Captain? Come aboard. First. <laughs> Perfect. So I want to talk with you because I want to get educated All right. on everything there is to know about the how do we get BC wild salmon into our shelves, why we should buy it, and what it's like to go out there and catch it. Well, this is a fish boat, obviously. That's the first thing you need. This is a freezer boat. We, we catch the fish one at a time, hook and line. July and August, we're trying to fish uh, springs, which is Chinook or coal, and pink salmon. Uh, way up at Haida Gwaii, which is just about 600 miles yeah, from I've here. Been up there. With a freezer boat and about 1,000 gallons of fuel, we have about three weeks we can stay out. It's extremely cold wow. down here. The fish go on the shelves wow. overnight. This is like Alaska in here. Yeah, that's uh, well over 20 below. What you're looking at are the shelves. Now the fish is caught, yeah. it's bled, they're dipped in a garbage pail, clean water, and they're literally glazed. Yeah. That water is in every orifice, and that's what preserves the fish. So what would you say to the people that say, oh, I only want to buy fresh, not frozen? Yeah, we get a lot of that. Probably 100 people a day here in Steve's saying, well, I prefer fresh fish, or I'd like a fresh fish, or do you have a fresh fish? For us to bring you a fresh fish, it would be old by the time we got here. But with a frozen fish, it is caught, it is bled, it is cleaned, it is washed, and then it is tossed down into our fish hole. And about four hours, it is frozen, core frozen. Oh yeah, you can, you can hear it, look, can you hear it? Knock, knock, wow, solid like a rock. Solid like a rock, if when you're downstairs, that's what you do, you know it's frozen. Look at that baby. So now we bring that fresh fish out. If you want to have this for dinner, it's a little one, give it a bath of water in your yeah. sink, leave it on the counter, and you will have a fish that is fresher than fresh. Frozen at sea, the yeah. only way to go. Who wants this fish? Movie star fish. I do, I do. 50 bucks, it's yours, take it home. I'll put it in this lovely bag we have. You can have this one right here. Done. There you go. Mission accomplished. Mission accomplished. And then more. Well, thank you very thank much. Thank you so we much, hope to Roger. See you on both sides of the rail here. I love this. And I think everybody should go to the dock and buy it from the fishermen or go to a qualified fishmonger that sells exactly this and ask for it by name. Wild, Wild BC salmon. You got it. Fresh versus frozen. Do you get asked a lot about that too? Well, uh, Rogers hit the nail on the head. Frozen at sea fish is indistinguishable from fresh fish when it's uh, uh, thawed out. But uh, in season, we don't discourage people from buying fresh fish. No. Uh, but it just it makes it available year round. I want just one more question on this. So tell me about RBC wild BC salmon into the international markets. Tell me a little bit more about that. Well. As, a, as I've uh, mentioned before, our fishery is focused on real high quality premium uh, production and uh, processing system and that's what uh, Roger spoke about, about doing on, on board processing whereas a lot of salmon fisheries elsewhere, they're dealing in high volume, they don't uh, take the same level of care that we do and that's why our uh, salmon is coveted around the world. It reminded me a lot of the fresh vegetables that are quickly frozen and they have just as much nutrition as the fresh vegetables that have traveled all the way from, you know, South America and they're waiting a long time to be eaten and the water's pouring over them in the grocery store. So I get that concept of fresh frozen, fresh frozen vegetables, fresh frozen fish. I get it. When we come back, we're going into the kitchen with celebrity chef Robert Clark. Bye. Bye. Still ahead on Carpe Diem. My favorite, the underdog, is a pink sand. So is that a more affordable cut is, as well? It is, it is the most affordable one. So we can all afford to eat that then? We can all afford to eat salmon. Carpe Diem.
seizing the day for Canadians as we age. Welcome back. In this segment, we're spending time with celebrity chef Robert Clark. I went to see him to learn how to choose and cook this nutritious delicacy. But first, we shop. I'm here to learn all there is to know about wild BC salmon, and who better to teach me but Chef Robert Clark. Hello, Chef, how are you, Hi, my man. friend? How are you? Things good. are good? No, things are fantastic. And you know, I wanted to learn all there was to learn about wild BC salmon. Teach me 101. Well, the basics are, here in British Columbia, we have five wild Pacific salmon species. There's pink, chum, coho, sockeye, and spring, or chinook. Those are our five species. Uh, they're available 365 days of the year, not always fresh, but salmon freezes very, very well, and it is an excellent source of, of protein, omega-3s, I mean, it's so and healthy for a, you. vitamin A, apparently. Vitamin, it's just so healthy for you, and it tastes and great. It ta I love the taste. So for the general consumer, there's often confusion, but when you go into your fishmonger, the store, you know, wh which one do I buy or what do I buy? So this week we have uh, three different species of the five. Each one is better with different applications. Like for me, sockeye is best raw. Like if I want sashimi or, or sushi, sockeye is my go-to uh, wild Pacific salmon. If I'm uh, grilling, it's generally uh, Chinook or coho. On the, our menu here, we have uh, a deep fried salmon, chum is the best. And my favorite, the underdog is a pink salmon. So is that a more affordable? Cut is, as well? It is, it is the most affordable one. So we can all afford to eat that then? We can all afford to eat salmon. Canned salmon, I'm told by nutritionists, is actually healthier for you than fresh because you're getting the bones and the skin all are very nutritious, high in calcium. Generally you see it in fillets or steaks, but salmon comes in so many varieties too. It's not just eating the flesh. We have salmon caviar, wild chum, I love that one. wild chum, Actually. smoked salmon, salmon stock, heads. Heads make beautiful and very nutritious soups. We can't keep them on the shelf. So the easy part would be for me to just come in here, see what you have, and take it home, and then you do all the legwork, and if you I do all the hard stuff. Yeah. If I was a capitalist, I'd say, yeah, the best <laughs> thing for you to do is come to the fish counter. <laughs> the best thing to do is buy wild BC salmon. That's first. the first question out of your mouth when buying salmon should be, is it wild BC salmon? Yeah. And if the person doesn't know, it's not else. the right place. It's not the right place. <laughs> My cooking skills are pretty basic. Could you teach me what to do with the salmon? I can show you three different ways <laughs> if you like. Great. That's an offer I can't refuse. When we come back, we'll see you in the kitchen. He's a master, right? The best. So now I'm a big fan of pink salmon. And why not? And why not? Pink it's, salmon? It's uh, probably the most abundant salmon. It has a two-year life cycle, so there are no impurities in it. And uh, amongst commercial fishermen, we believe it's the best kept secret. It's the, it's the fish that more of my friends uh, uh, choose to eat than any of the others. But regardless of which kind of fish or salmon that you choose, they all provide you with those omega-3 fats, which are known to improve your heart health, they lower triglycerides, and if you have more salmon or fish oils in your diet, it will go to a less inflammatory, sort of more calming um, metabolism in your body. So include fish in your diet so that you can have more of that calming effect. Now, cooking salmon can be very easy. Let's go into the kitchen with Chef Robert Clark. We're in the kitchen with Chef Robert Clark and we're learning how to cook BC wild salmon. So, uh, here I have, uh, these, these are all pre-cooked simply uh, because the fish, it takes so little time and you don't want to overcook the fish that the vegetables take longer. So, so little potatoes. Yeah, we have some little potatoes and again, you can put whatever things you like in here. I like some mushrooms, I like some onions, some nice fresh thyme. Mm. Okay. And this so is all just pre-roasted, pre that's all you've done? Yeah, I've cooked, the, I've boiled the potatoes, I've sauteed the mushrooms and I've blanched the asparagus. Simple. That's very, very simple. Take a little piece of nice pink salmon. Yeah, pink. So then we're just going to make a little little Market. boat, maybe. Wine's not necessary, but... Local BC I wine, am. I see. Yes. Excellent. Yeah. So that has potatoes, asparagus, thyme, mushrooms. Salt, pepper, a dry white wine, and as much butter as you like. I, to maintain my figure, put three. <laughs> and that's it. This is only going to take about four, five minutes in the oven. Now our pan fry, we're gonna have to uh, struggle over here. Okay, I okay, love that. Okay, would you like to come over? Yes, or? I do. Yeah, you can use olive oil, vegetable oil, whatever you like, not too much. Flesh side down. So we're just gonna get a little caramelization on here, a little color. 
Okay, and that's just, just to give it a little roasting flavor. This is just a little bit of mayonnaise with some saffron, and I did that because I knew you were coming. And uh, uh, some horseradish, a little bit of garlic. Okay, throw it on, there's some veg for you. And that's gonna come out perfect. We'll also take this opportunity to, to put in uh, the one that we're, we're uh, baking. Okay. There we go. Check out our... I smell that. But see how easy and fast it is. And, and here we have wonderful, wild, Pacific salmon, pink being one of my favorites. So do you like pink salmon? I love okay. pink salmon. So, okay, you're the expert in salmon. You have it around you all the time. What's your, t give us a recipe, an insider scoop. I, I gotta tell you, people ask me all the time, how do you prepare your salmon? Yeah. And when I'm on the boat, I've obviously got access to the best and freshest salmon in the world. I put it in a pan, I put salt and pepper on it, and I'm done. There's so many ways to cook salmon. Chef Clark gives us a few more tips. We're back at the fish counter. Chef Clark is already in the kitchen and we're going to cook salmon. Today I really, really want to demonstrate how simple and how versatile uh, wild BC salmon is, in particular pink. Just nice. getting this ready, so this is for poaching. So basically get, this is how simple it is, just get yourself a shallow lasagna type dish. I've put some onions and some fennel and some garlic in there because those are the flavors that I like. Uh, and then you just lay your, your pieces of fish in and there. And is this pink? This is wild pink salmon, wild BC pink I salmon. I can tell by the color now. Okay, that's and good. we're gonna cook it all at once to show you how, how fast it is too. So that's ready there. So what we have here is just like a core bouillon, water, bay leaves, salt, some onions, some leek, and a little bit of acid, lemon, vinegar. Then we're just gonna pour this over, over our pink salmon. So this is my favorite. So the pouring, the action of pouring the water into the container brings it down to 97 degrees. And we just leave that. You cannot overcook that now. You can leave it there for 10 minutes or you can leave it there for 30 minutes. It's still going to be perfect. So we're going to make a little salad okay. to present this on. And that's where when our poached salmon's ready, and it's going to be a couple minutes still. When that's ready, we're just going to put take that out of the liquid, put it on top. Lunch is, lunch is ready. The water temperature is now cooled that it's not cooking anymore. But this is cold enough now that it's below yeah. below cooking. Maybe a little bit of lemon. Okay. What a gorgeous dish. And that's lunch, like so, so easy. What a great pleasure it's been to be with you in the kitchen, Chef. I wanna try this at home. What's the best place for me to get the recipes? Just go to bcsalmon.ca and the recipes will be there. Great. I and wanna see you try them. I, I'm going to try them. I want you to try them too. And uh, don't forget, when you go shopping, ask for BC Wild Salmon. A million ways to cook it, five varieties. What do fish eat? Depends on the fish. Mm -hmm. We had the five different species, and each of them has their own favorite things. And I think that's what produces those unique flavors and certainly produces a unique coloration. You mentioned in that that you notice the pink salmon have that lighter pink flesh, yeah. and that's due to partially because of what they're eating you are what you eat. Yeah, so it's so. It, tell me a little bit more though, because I know there's that, what Dane, there's the pink salmon. Coho, sockeye, chum, spring and chinook. And don't they all eat the same thing? They do not. Oh, <gasps> I didn't know that. Yeah. So not only do they not eat the same thing, but they eat different things at different times in their life. And right? then they don't eat near the end. It right? eats the plankton and near the end, nothing. All coming back, stomachs are empty, they're now getting ready for the last part of their life, whether the last part of their life is for nutrition for you, nutrition for a bear, or back into the ground. Oh, I just love to get educated. We have to take a break, but when we come back, we're going to get ready for our panel's final thoughts. Bye. Still ahead on Carpe Diem. It has to be the color that I want it to be naturally, not the color somebody else wants it to be because they put a little dye in the water. DM. Seizing the day for Canadians as we age. It's now time to go around the table for our panel's final thoughts on why we should, at the store or at the restaurant, ask for wild BC salmon. But first, we asked you, what kind of salmon do you eat? 
I like wild salmon, mm -hmm. yeah. And why is that? Um, it's got a better uh, reputation, I guess you could call that. You don't get the, the ticks and the mites that the farm salmon do. I wouldn't want farm salmon. I mean, it's not a natural product. It has to be the color that I want it to be naturally, not the color somebody else wants it to be because they put a little dye in the water. The people have spoken. It's wild salmon. And you know, regardless of the type of fish you want to eat, please have two servings a week to get those beneficial fish oils and also the protein we need as we get older. Well, this show really taught us how to harvest a fish in a sustainable manner. It taught us how to eat a fish in a healthy manner. It taught us how healthy the fish was for us. What Stream Keepers does is turns that around and says, if you go and count those fish and get out in the wild, it's healthy for you as well. That outdoor experience is healthy for you, healthy for the fish. Oh, that's fantastic. And Dane, your final thoughts? It's as perfect a food as, uh, as there is. It comes from a food production system that uh, has a very low carbon footprint, requires no arable land, the only fresh water is for spawning, and it's free from fertilizers, pesticides, antibiotics, and other uh, harmful degrading substances and it tastes great. Thank you so much to my panel, of course, Ingrid and Zoan and Dane for being with us. Such an education. And that's the show. And remember, as our CARP president, Moses Neimer, always says, the best way to keep going is to keep going. So carpe diem and seize your day. Okay.